Welcome to Sad Boys, a podcast about feelings and other things also. I'm Jarvis. Whoa. Whoa. He's in, I'm flying. I'm, he's in the Matrix. Uh, what the heck? Oh, Trinity, no. Look Bullet out. time. It's, it's the main guy. It's the main, like Smith? It's Morleus. Mor- no. Oh, so close. Morleus, look out. It's... Morleus, look out. Uh... Hugo Weaving. No, I told you it was Smith. It, it, That's his character. Yeah, his first name is Hugo Weaving. His first name is Hugo Weaving Smith. It would be really funny if partway through that movie, they're like, uh, we're analyzing the code. It turns out that Agent Smith is a type of virus, but oh, his first name is Clarence. <laughs> okay. Oh, not really concerned about it. Really, this doesn't change anything. <laughs> You don't fear me, Mr. Anderson. Yeah, because we found out about Clarence. You don't fear a guy named Clarence, Mr. Anderson. Yes. And he does the he does the thing where it like show it's like uh the the shutter speed is oh, like yeah, really low and it's like you see him like <laughs> in a bunch of things. Um, I don't tell you about the uh, movie double feature I insisted on watching every day one summer when I was like eight. If this vaguely sounds familiar, but tell me, I would have to watch The Matrix Revolutions. Right. Oh no. Reloaded. Yeah. Had not seen the others. Yes. That's then what, I do remember what that. Women Want starring Mel Gibson. I've never seen that movie. Rewatched it recently. This is hold up. Because I wanted to show Katie, because I'm like, you know, when you have kind of a anecdote that kind of drifts in the way of, of stand up rules where it's it's true, but you don't remember it well enough, maybe you're embellishing it with the funnier moments. Mm-hmm. And I would refer to it in a like, yeah, Mel Gibson gains the idea, uh, g- gains the ability to read women's minds because he's an advertising executive that trips into the bathtub while holding uh, hair colors and other uh, feminine products because to test them out because he's a misogynist that needs to learn the how what they're like. And oh. it, it is complete nonsense. Turns out that is literally exactly what happens. Oh wow! And he can also read dog dogs' minds. No, dog oh, that's, minds. that's an odd. It happens one time and then never comes back. But he, this is a movie about a misogynist needing to be re-educated. Right. And he, in the universe of the movie, is right. Like, it is crazy that he's just like, women only think about one thing, thinking about their handbags and shopping. And then he's walking through a crowd of people and they're like, ah, my period, shopping, handbags. handbags, And it's like, I can't believe it was published also, like, I won't spoil it for people because I do recommend watching it. But it is—it's actually probably an imperfect encapsulation of what was so broken about early to mid two thousands. I guess it's a rom com, but early mid two thousand comedy dramas or whatever, and how they don't understand tone and they feel AI written, like weirdly. Yeah. So. And the AI is trained on those movies. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. It is. Um, hey man, it's a good hate watch with some pals around, but um. Twinning it with The Matrix Reloaded without having seen the other movies does give you a bit of tonal whiplash. I was literally I was going to say the phrase tonal whiplash. <laughs> it is. Um, it's not unlike coming out of The Matrix. Also, howdy. I'm Jordan. Howdy. Um, Did I howdy in the live show? I can't remember. Uh... I don't remember either. It was all kind of a blur. Austin kind of saying blur. you did. Austin's nodding in emphatically. Austin is here in person. Austin. Austin, the- stick your head awkwardly into frame. Nice. It's just awkward, yeah. Nice. Oh, it's all dandruff. Oh, no. Oh, oh the cameras, it's broke. <laughs> um, we, oh, the ugliness of meters going off. We had our live show. We had the Sad Boys live show at Dynasty Typewriter, December 3rd at 4 p.m. It happened. As funny as it would be to now be here being solemn and say it did not go particularly well. Yeah, everything went wrong. wrong. Everything that could go wrong did go wrong. It was perfect. It was yeah, everything so went fun incredible audience really good time um shout outs to mateo for being a very good sport uh, uh and shout out to isaiah and you'll you'll oh, know why you'll know why if you were there so oh my god that i mean th- see that's the stuff that like the you know the prepared which we did they worked that was really fun the guests were gonna work perfectly super fun it was those little little bonus special pieces. bonus factors uh, but if you were not there and don't know what we're talking about, we will be releasing it on the Patreon. So stay tuned for details regarding that. Jacob is uh, in the lab right now cooking up the edit of the live show. We have it filmed in beautiful 4K. He always wears a white lab coat for the podcast, so that yeah. worked out pretty well. 
he insists on using like beakers yeah. <laughs> and stuff, and I don't really understand how that applies. I just to want to be a scientist so bad. Yeah, yeah he's true. like, yeah, he's your cosplaying. Focus, your focus has been on bunts and burners lately, which mm-hmm. doesn't feel very productive for the podcast. But we're not engineers. We, you know, you don't know shit about coding. I don't know anything about film production. Yeah. Freaking knows. But yeah, live show went well. Thank you to everybody who came out, and stay tuned uh, for those who want to see it because it's. I mean, we can reveal now. The uh, we had Eddie Burback, we had Nakey Jakey, we had Ify Wadiway, we had Chad Chad. Yeah, yeah. Jealous much? Jealous much? <laughs> it was a star-studded crew. Um, yeah, and a grand old time. So thanks again for that. It was a very fun one. Um, that was like, I mean, you know, how was your week, including the live? Sh- like, how was it after the live show? Oh, it's not been good, for, to be honest. I've been like out of it. I've been I've been tired. I've been sad. Um, been trying to figure out what's wrong. <laughs> um, it's like small like work things, but I don't know. It's just not been I've not been on the right foot lately. Mm. Does it feel kind of intangible? It's not, some of like it's tangible. Like it's things. easy to point to things and say like this is the problem, but. If I were in better spirits, they probably wouldn't be an issue, if that makes sense. Mm. Like, it's, And if all of them were resolved, you wouldn't just be a 10. Exactly, exactly. So that's that's kind of that's kind of where I'm at. But, uh, you know, uh, another day, another sleigh, as they say. Um, and I'm just going to keep keep at it, keep doing things. Um, you know what they say, it's another day, another sleigh. Yeah, and I, thank you Man, that's for saying that. Yeah, what a great idea I just had. Yeah, but before we get into that, me, Jarvis, has a word from today's sponsor, Liquid IV. Did you know that proper hydration is essential to daily health? That's why Liquid IV's hydration multiplier is one of the best products to add to your daily routine. With just one stick, you can hydrate two times faster than water alone, plus you get essential vitamins and three times as much electrolytes as leading sports drinks. Liquid IV comes in 12 delicious and refreshing flavors, and there's no artificial sweeteners. Right now, I am rocking Liquid IV's sugar-free white peach. The packaging, by the way, is very compact and convenient. You can take it with you if you just need to pick me up at work or during a busy day or even after a late night out. You can grab your Liquid IV in bulk at Costco, or you can head over to liquidiv.com and use code SADBOYS at checkout to get 20% off your order. That's 20% off of anything when you shop Better Hydration today at liquidiv.com and use code SADBOYS with a Z at checkout. Thanks again to Liquid IV for sponsoring this video. Now back to the boys. Howdy as well. Yeah, wait. <laughs> <laughs> and that's mine. That's my thing. Yeah, sorry you've not been feeling so hot. That's okay. I mean, it, it comes with the territory of being alive and... Uh, and it will pass because no feeling is permanent. And uh, all feelings, the good ones and the bad ones, uh, do eventually go. So I'm just trying to like be present, acknowledge, acknowledge the moment. Um, it is a bad time for my therapist to be on vacation, uh, but it's the holidays. So I also just don't do well during the holidays. The holidays mm-hmm. are always very, very solemn, very solitary, very sad for me because I don't... Um, tend to do anything with family just because I don't have a uh, super close like I don't really have that relationship with my family yeah my and then like it's kind of like uh, I've explained it before but um there's like my blood relatives and there's like the family that raised me and a lot of people from the family that raised me have passed away so there's not like uh somewhere to go back in that in that corner and then like my uh blood relatives i didn't grow up with yeah. in yeah. that way. So it's like, so it ends up being a complicated thing. So I, I tend to just like, uh, I, I tend to just ride alone when it comes to the the holidays uh, or I'll do things with friends. And that's what I'm going to try to do this year. Keep myself, keep myself busy, keep myself from stewing too much, but it's very I'll keep myself from stewing, Whoa. stewing Stop. too much. Brian, you Stop yourself. I'm a baby. It's happening again. The full um, moon's out. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, I mean, we have the yeah, we have a similar situation with the holidays. But you know, sometimes you hear people talk about like, oh, it's gone back to seeing the family, and Uncle George is racist or something like that. Yeah. And I, I don't totally understand it, but I also do. I 
I, I wonder if at some point we should find something that is ours. Because I've also been away yeah. while we used to spend our Christmases together. True, true. Yeah, no. The first one since I'm back? Yeah. First one I'm, well, I'm here since I got back. Yeah. I briefly was away after I moved back over Christmas. Right. Just um, I have had a little bit of that experience. We talked about it. Like the Uncle George is racist or whatever. Like we had a little bit of that because uh, sometimes I'll like go visit Russell's family. I haven't done it in a while, but I'm Russell's sure if racist. I if I hit them up, they would like have <laughs> me, you know. But I'm also not. It's uh, one of those things where it's like I'm bad at reaching out because I don't want to. I don't know what I have the energy for or the desire for. Like a friend asked me, um, "Yo, when are we gonna hang out?" And I and I was like. I don't know, cause like I wish soon. Yeah, but I, I wish don't know soon, me. But right now, I'm not feeling like I want to commit to something. The one that cancels on you isn't the me right now. Yeah, blame him. Don't blame him. He's not doing well. But yeah. like, like, I'm sorry for him. Um, though uh, we did do an episode. I want to say 2017 called "Awkward Thanksgiving Conversations," where we did talk a little bit about. Uh, my experiences with uh, like Uncle Dan's racist type mm. type beat, but um, it's funny to think the podcast is a place now where I just don't remember episodes. Oh, they, I, I mean, it's I feel like it's been like that the whole time because <laughs> I don't know what we've said. There's like lots of stuff though. Just for the live show, we had to I had to like look through some of our old episodes, so it was interesting. There's a few things that were really prophetic from like the episode zero that oh, we like yeah. never put out. And some of that we played during the live show, but then there's other stuff that was like too long to include where we like have a conversation about, um, uh, the early episodes of sad boys were very like topic focused. And I eventually it started to feel like therapy and I was like already going to therapy once a week. And so it just like felt like a very emotionally draining to do the show that way. Felt like a deliverable too. Yeah. When we say topic focus for people who don't know, we, we're, we're talking about like today's episode is about family. Today's episode is yeah. about race or validation. Yeah, exactly. Which is it's, no, fine it's totally great. As and a fine. jumping off, but it's kind of like um, so it was almost like improv where <laughs> there was this third performer that was the show itself, mm -hmm. and we would be like, "Ah, oh, we're on a pirate ship. We're bored." And we're like, "No, we're at a doctor's office." <laughs> oh, I okay. I um, but. In the episode zero, which was like basically just a meeting we were having trying to like workshop what the show was, I say like, well, I don't just want it to be like this because uh, that might be like exhausting for me. It's like I predicted the future, but I didn't even remember that mm -hmm. I had said it. There's a few things like that. For example, um, I, I had it playing on the speaker when I was editing and I said to Austin in real life out loud, um, I guess our first episode, which is like 36 questions to fall in love, we call that episode zero um, at some point. And so uh, technically this is like episode negative one or something like that. And then in the recording for it, I go, this is episode zero or episode negative one. And I'm like, what? I, uh, w there's no free will. <laughs> we, should, we should keep doing it. We are all this should be episode zero. deterministic, finite state automata. Oh, yeah. There is no... Uh there is no free will, only fatalism. Uh, I am very much a John Locke, of <laughs> philosophically yeah, you speaking. You can't tell me. Don't tell me what I can't do. Uh, don't tell me when I, what I, where I can't be on an island. Don't tell me where I am or what I said. Don't. Do, I just was the episode where he has a flashback, or like he t travels by briefly and sees Richard, and Richard literally goes like, "Don't let him tell you what to not do." Yeah. <laughs> he's like, and he's like, <laughs> he's like, "I won't." Thanks. Was, Thanks, man. I was Thanks, just thinking Richard. about letting people tell me what I can't do. Um, shout out to Lost, truly. Shout out to Lost. I, it is sad to me that we at any point lived in a world, and I do think it would be different now, where being going really strange and avant-garde and having fun with a show, for whatever, you know, for all the drama that was happening behind the scenes, like, as a result, as a um, product, Lost, in my opinion, has only been getting better over time. And I really... I think if Lost existed in a post or during Mr. Robot era, mm. it would receive a lot of the same love as a weird high concept show. Yeah. Would not be as like, I mean, I won't spoil too much of it. The, basically the cast just completely turns over. 
Like, there's a lot of the same people in it, but the show kind of acknowledges like who's right for this story at this time, and it's just I I we were watching <laughs> we were watching some of my favorite episodes at the same time that that guy was in the background with his Wacom tablet on the plane. He skipped every Joey scene, so I was half there for one episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, oh yeah. Shout out. Shout out to that guy. Um, Shout out to Joey. Some say he's watching Friends right now, and he's skipping the Joey scenes. Yeah, I got off, got off the plane. The pilot was like, "That's." He's been dead. For me. Yeah. I do appreciate I mean, we've talked about it many times, but I, th- I think, yeah, that's a very healthy approach to things not being great is yeah. accepting that impermanence. At the same time, though, the people who are in long, sustaining, difficult points, it's not, it, it, the thing you're experiencing isn't invalid because of that. Right. It's just something to hold on to. Um, regardless of where it ends up going, it's just not literally not going to be the same. It's it's contrary to what your brain wants to do and what humans, uh, yeah, what your what humans are bad at, but insist on doing, which is assuming that everything will stay the same. A lot of our like anxieties are based on the fact that like uh, literally everything about the world doesn't change like every second, sure. and and we are not good at predicting the future, but as a survival mechanism, like it's natural to try to predict. The future, but then you, that gets into like anxiety, you know. Um, and humans really don't like feeling powerless. Yeah, that's, that's kind of why. Like, I, I feel like, especially right after I went back to the UK, a lot of people were saying like, "Well, this, the, or actually, mourning." I guess is like when people say it a lot. I mean, you've experienced this too, where mm-hmm. people will say like. Wow, sorry to hear that. And then either make a reference to their own experience or say, try and comfort you with a platitude when in reality, mm. I mean, I'm okay with other people's experience. That can be helpful. But with the platitudes, like they're like, oh, well, you know, things get better. Not everything will stay the same. Mm-hmm. It's well intentioned, but I also think a lot of the time it's a, oh, my friend is suffering and I can't do anything. Mm-hmm. He is my last resort. Yeah. Uh, that won't happen forever. And yeah. If, I get that instinct because if people think that we think it will, right? Great. Feedback. Yeah, and yeah. I, I'm actually like uh, my unpopular opinion is I, I'm not too much a hater of platitudes. I think it depends on where, you know, it feels like it's coming from. Because I think a platitude mm, yeah. can be earnest, and it could also be like, uh, I don't want to have this conversation. I don't want to have anymore. this conversation. Yeah, because a lot of times those platitudes, like, um, are based in something like you know, like something time heals all wounds or something like that. It's like, whatever. But, you know, when you, you know, look back on your life and about the things that were like particularly painful or stressful in a moment in time, and you look at them with like hindsight, you go, oh, I guess like that really wasn't a big deal. Mm -hmm. You know, there's some things that are big deals, but other things, you know, that may ruin a day for me today. I may look back in a week, in a year, and say, you know, what was I worried about? Oh, well, I mean, based on the way you're talking about it now, it'll probably be close to like, oh, yeah, I was right. <laughs> you know, yeah. the, the, it was that kind of temporary. Uh, I mean, the only time I get frustrated by platitudes is when I've asked for something else. Is oh, if, if that's, I say like, yeah. I'm venting and I'm still getting platitudes. I'm, I, right, I right. I have to too many times say like, it's okay. Yeah. This is just hearing me out and igno- accepting or challenging my reality is just the, all I'm after. Mm-hmm. But to do that, I mean, that's being powerless. It's like not being able to help somebody you care about in a right. really complicated situation. Uh, it's and like, I'm as guilty as anyone. Like we will do it's it. It's like when you them. have a, like if you, if you're talking to a partner and it's like, if you can, if you're a person that wants to solve every problem and your partner's like share in their venting and they don't want you to solve their problems, mm-hmm. they just want to, they just want to vent then like it's even if it's well-intentioned trying to solve the problem right now is not going to be it's not going to lead to good things you yeah. just kind of have to like listen to what they want i think that's the height of it right is like uh the most platitudes i've ever gotten from anyone is in a very well-intentioned relationship setting mm-hmm. where mm-hmm. the level of intimacy you have together m- makes the feeling of powerlessness hurt the most and right. also when I've given it the most. Mm-hmm. And then on the other end of the spectrum where it happens the most, and I think it is not well-intentioned, is often kind of boomer friend, uh, family or like family friends who are just like, you know, got like, like 
northern family and were very like kind of emotionally traditional don't talk about your emotions kind of thing right be just wanting to be like i don't like having this conversation yeah it's actually fine you're like oh okay then that's good for you <laughs> that i no longer feel too bad yeah um well but how about you how how is your how is your week including the show um i was i was i had a good stretch of hypermania prior to the show maybe partly in anticipation but also finally not anticipating having to travel mm. or having like a thing mm -hmm. you know it was like got to be back every couple months to check in with the family do so and so now got to go back for you know stuff with my mom and my aunt and all that then all the logistics for it then going back for the funeral itself but prior to that planning the funeral then a nice trip but still uh you know week and a half after the funeral was going to michigan and i was coming back from michigan and now this is the longest break where i'm not getting ready to go somewhere for some right. uh usually something that sucks and i the live show was kind of the last thing thing so i think my uh also meds very inconsistent with travel and sleep and things like that mm -hmm. and then i just i don't know i had like kind of yeah that had manic period got <laughs> my apartment is very clean <laughs> i'll say that um and then the live show happened and i was expecting it that's typically when it happens as i my because i'm the same with like I'm younger sometimes drugs but usually just alcohol is like you know my thing where once the high starts i really struggle to let it go and the high of the live show was such that i'm like i want to carry i usually want to carry that forward and kind of then lose myself over the course of five days or so and then deep depression afterwards. But I think a mix of having the hypermanic episode prior to the show, which should have made me worse for the show, but maybe the show just picked me up so much. Having it prior to that and then we had a really nice warm down from the show. Mm. And I think that helped. I think we all, I just say to people, hypermanic is obviously not conditional, not all due to conditions, it's partially luck. But we had a dinner, dinner and drinks with all, uh, all the people involved and the friends that came to the show after. And I think that was like a, brought me down to earth again mm -hmm. a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like performer Jordan can take a breath. Mm -hmm. The show is our, our authentic selves, but we do have to retain a little bit of our authentic selves. It is still a performance. We're sure. still on. Yep. And sitting down, Jakey was in town, which was really nice. Oh yeah. To hang out with Jakey, catch up a little bit. Uh, fortunate that the GTA, GTA 6 trailer hadn't come out yet because we would have been there for hours we would lose <laughs> ourselves to that having chats with jakey about video games is like we could two years could pass with long beers <laughs> and skeletons or something uh, but yeah i'm surprised by doing all all right i'm readying myself for a little bit of a drop i mean which is yeah. just the way i have a psych session next this friday yeah. for the first time in three months so that could be I'm he doesn't know about my mom, oh. so I'm gonna have to hit him. And he's so sweet, right? He's like the loveliest guy. Yeah. And he, you know, he's emotionally measured with stuff like that. So he right. Professionally, is good at it, but it does feel like telling a friend a little bit. Yeah. I'm just like, Sue. Yeah. My guy. Uh, right. A funny thing happened you on the way to the to leave. plane. Um. Yeah. This is happened. something. <laughs> Uh, he's like, do you have any news? I'm like, um, yeah, I think <laughs> I do. Uh, so he kicked out the funeral for being cringe. Yeah, what's that? Uh, it's like uh, Awkward Penguin or whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dr. Awkward has yeah. checked in. Yeah. Palindrome. Ooh. That's not true. Dr. Awkward. Yeah, maybe it is. Oh, Palindrome. Wait, same way both ways? Yeah. I believe you, but... Oh, that's cool. I lived in a children's book. I recently read a palindrome. Yeah. Yeah, I read. Yeah, I'm I see it now. I see it now. I can't wait to... I don't really know if I intend to have kids, but when I, if I did, I, I'm going to be such a nighttime story reader. Oh. Because I'm just... I, every time I... like My niece has like a children's book or something and I'm reading it, I'm just like, this is sick. This is. I'm learning a lot about everybody pooping. I'm going to definitely like get down too many ADHD rabbit holes when I'm asked about how things work oh, or like yeah. why, why things are. <laughs> the kid is just going to be like too I'm many like, variables. Oh yeah. Why is the sky blue? Okay. Well, 
to they, us, it is, of course. Yeah, to us, it is. Uh, Let me get Hank Green video. <laughs> yeah, there's going to be a lot of, yeah, there's going to be a lot of sources. Let me call Uncle Hank. Let's yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's the kid again. Sorry, Hank. <laughs> yeah, I know I'm asking you to do this again. He, he just plays a pre-recorded video. <laughs> Of himself. That you could have played. That I could have played. <laughs> it could have been. You flew him out to your house yeah, to do that. He hits play on SciShow. And he goes, here you go. The kid's asleep. <laughs> no. Uh, and it's just me watching it. And I go, ooh, interesting. <laughs> oh. Oh, Scratches shit. my itch. Oh, man. You see I that? Sh- I actually child? don't have a kid, so this <laughs> is perfect for me. Yeah, it's... Um, <laughs> I was trying to... It's, it's White Jarvis. That's my kid. <laughs> the figure. Not your house. <laughs> it's not my house. I Sorry. rented this. Hey, it's Hanks, all... this is your house. He's, I think, probably foundational YouTuber for us, I think. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I want to... Even also you, actually, than me. I want to have Hank and John on the show at some point, but they never come out here. And uh, I'm jealous that... I saw Curtis did an episode with Hank, and I was like, oh, I'm so... I mean, not jealous, jealous, but like I was like, oh, I want... For me too. <laughs> yeah, um, supportive and excited. Jealous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, sick. <laughs> um, What's funny is when I see friends and our friends in that sphere, especially Great White Northwise, doing like specials and big stand-up events and stuff like that, because it's never been a goal. So I, it's like a different kind of jealousy. Right. It's like a hey, big thing. Big thing. But then I exciting don't feel the like. When do I get that big thing? It's, right. It's kind of I try. You know, I try. We both try and be balanced. We're semi semi self aware about that stuff. But yeah, it's not so much the feeling you can prevent. It's the, your reaction to it. Right. What you do and say. And that's that's the thing, especially with um, just like bad vibes central, uh, which is the current town that my brain is in. The it's in lockdown, unfortunately. Yeah, it's like you can't. It sucks because, like, I was talking to my therapist about this. She's like, "Well, you have so much self awareness about this thing, and you're like taking steps, and you're doing what you can." And I'm like, "Yeah, it just sucks that the feeling exists. Mm. Like, I, I, I have the tools to like weather the feeling, but I hate experiencing the feeling." Yeah. I've saved up the money, but I can't pay off the debt. For yeah, some reason. they won't accept the money. Yeah, it's like I can, like I can block the 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 jutsu from my you know critic brain. Yeah, but it's still I still take chip damage. You know what I mean? Okay, now we're at noise. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's like there's no perfect parry. Yeah, that prevents you know that prevents me from taking taking da- psychic damage. <laughs> Dude, you're, you're activating my brain right now. Yeah. Been, I'm trying to convince Katie to get into fighting games. Ooh. Because the two things she's very good at and very... I'll ask her if she's like, what can we talking about? Uh, <laughs> I don't give a shit. I talk what I want. I'm famous. I can do whatever I want. Okay, <laughs> babe. Uh, I, she's really into Pokemon Go Battle League right now. Mm-hmm. And uh, she's very good at and very into poker. Mm-hmm. Has been for a long time. Yeah. And she was showing me... Uh, Op- optimal sheets, essentially. Um, she's also playing chess, too, but primarily poker. And poker has, you know, game theory optimization, yeah. similar to oh, for sure. every other complex game. But she is very good at poker and very into the optimization. While she's showing me these sheets, I'm like, this is a fighting game. Yeah, what you're I looking mean- at, minus e- execution... You are looking at frame data. You are looking at tier lists. Yeah, she studies math also. Yes. Yeah, for, for context. She counts. She's so good at counting. Yeah. 10, 20, and I know the rest. I don't even, yeah, I was going to say, you, you're past me at this point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, coding requires ones and zeros. I saw like one of her things that she was working on, and I've taken a lot of math classes too in my day, and I was like, man, I'm so glad I don't have to do this shit. <laughs> It was like, because it used, to, it used to be like, you know, it's like for my degree, it was one of the degree requirements. Counting. And yeah, counting. And I was like, okay, I got one through five down. But then like, there's all these, like, what's six? It's there's, like a fucking squiggle. But there's six computers here. Yeah. <laughs> How many am I supposed to use? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> six is a vibe. 
Yeah, don't even get me started on zero, which is very hard to grasp. Tarrant Tad was your teacher. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't exist. One times one is two. <laughs> one, <laughs> two, one man. plus one is two, man. I, that's not even a Terrence Howard impression, but it's like it's my a, impression of Jordan's Terrence Howard impression. Which is my impression of Jamie Foxx's impression. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's a, it's a Jamie all the way down. Right. Um... But yeah, so you're trying to get Katie into fighting games? I'm trying to get her into fighting games. It is a tall order because it's also, you know what? It'd be like if you're pitching somebody on chess and then you were like, but hear this, it's not fun for 40 hours. <laughs> you have to find someone at exactly your skill level. Yeah. Or it won't be fun. Or it won't be fun. Without practicing at home. All the time. Pre sounds pretty cool, but she's yeah. already loved You've got to memorize all of the combinations. Her and the dog are long gone. Oh, okay. You have to <laughs> memorize the frame data Come of back, the please. moves. Please, but I, <laughs> I love you. I love you, please. <laughs> Me um, running down the street. I'm wait, wait, go. but there's flow charts as well. <laughs> <It's about> her <laughs> apartment. <There's laughs> she more loved. things to... Please, there's, um, you know, number one, two, three, uh, et cetera. Uh, yeah, it's just like six. <laughs> Um, <laughs> you, you love that Dude, teaching a math class And being like one, two, etc It's a lot like six Yeah, it's a lot like six it's so close Yeah, it's just things um, <laughs> Describing things like numbers um, Like I was uh, I was getting on the highway the other day And it was kind of a It was kind of a lot like eight Yeah it's, Yeah, where it kind of like Looped back around Yeah or like, I was like, damn, I mean, that's I'm, crazy I don't know what they look like These numbers But it's, yeah. there's eight guys there I would imagine probably. I was watching F1 And they were on a track <laughs> That was a lot like zero There's so many more cars than one Yeah And I was like F this <laughs> F A Get that A oh, F, More leaving. like F U <laughs> Jacob, come back Just kidding uh, Shout outs to Austin, by the way. I don't know if this is when we want to do it. Huh? But he gifted us on his way from the Great White North. Austin, one of our team members and editors. Came down for the live show. He gifted us the Holy Canadian Kit Kat. Yeah, the Canadian Kit Kat. They make it special there. Those familiar with the lore of the show know. You know it's good because Jordan puts up with it even though there's French on the packaging. Yeah. It's no, no. If you turn, no, if you turn it around, yeah. Oh yeah, it, no, no. On this side, it's just English. I think it's, it's on the wrong side. Everything. <laughs> I feel like um, everything in Canada, you like have to like look at it with one at one <laughs> angle for like the, it's like an optical illusion. You look at it one way, it's English; one way, it's French. You want to know something jacked up? I have it with me. I could. Yeah, I'll just show you one sec. Oh, this is an incredible segue, and you have no idea. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. The British passport includes Why? the French translation. Why? On the s other side. So what it looks like is uh, you know, January 2020 is when you get the passport, and it expires six. in French January 2024. <laughs> uh, speaking of passports, I oh, went yeah. yesterday to go get a passport photo taken. How'd it go? Bad. Um, the guy, I went to the UPS store, and I don't know why people make such a, like there's all these rules and regulations around passport photos, but in reality, it was just like a guy with like a weird camera. <laughs> and then he like took the photo from below me cause he was a bit shorter than me. <laughs> and I said, Hey, do you want me to sit down? And he said, no. Okay. And so I'm standing up towering over this man while he like, takes a photo of me like I'm a fucking titan. Yeah. <laughs> and be a kaiju passport. Yeah, right? and then, yeah, it's forced perspective. <laughs> I'm Gandalf or whatever. Yeah, you're going to New Zealand. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I get the photo. But they print it on like a little printer thing that is also a thing you can commercially buy. All None of these things are special. They're not like government-issued oh, passport yeah. generator. Uh, it's just like a Canon photo printer and a, a shitty Canon camera. And um, and the photo looked bad, <laughs> and and this is a uh, no offense to the guy just doing his job, but say more, his name. Okay, Rodrigo. <laughs> we found him. Yeah, we found you. Uh, no, so uh, I was like, I can't, I can't put the, I can't do this. And then I was like, <laughs> well, I can just take. You can take your own passport photo in America. And so I came back here and I set up my big softbox. And uh, against one of the white walls, and I had Austin take a photo of me, um, and then we're, we submitted that. You, it's mentioned in that little frame, right? We have mm -hmm. to line it up. Yeah, exactly. You got to you got to crop it in. Um, but yeah, and so 
now it was previously taken with maybe the world's worst camera. And then I took it with one of our podcast cameras um, and it was too high definition mm. to the point where, oh, yeah. where people are like, this looks like AI or, or, <laughs> or like, because <laughs> the only time people are now seeing hyper like high de- like high definition high dpi images or when they're generated by ai uh yeah, and in the image you have an extra tooth that's fingers, true yeah. yeah no i do have an extra and it's a beautiful nude it's yeah there's a few nude. items that are unidentifiable in the picture <laughs> yeah it's like a trick yeah it's like name one of these things if you blur your eyes it's two people kissing and if you focus on it, it's a vase or yeah. something. so i i mean i hope they accept it um once they accept it then i'll have a i'll release a few more secrets about the photo what could that be it was ai <laughs> um yeah, it's got like a, a secret code on it. <laughs> one zero one zero. Like when you look when when the uh, gate agent looks at it, like blinds them. Like, ah. <laughs> I guess I have to let you through. <laughs> yeah, it's French. If you look at it with one eye, do not even bring that up. I um, told you. Yeah, that it's like I have a I have uh, I have like a, a striped shirt and a beret on. <laughs> you look like a burglar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I look like the the hamburglar. Why is the why well, yeah why is burglar attire the same as a mime? Um. Because the mimes are trapped in invisible jail. Oh, they're all jailed. Oh, that's yeah. when they're grabbing the bars and shaking yeah, yeah, them. Yeah. And like, ah. yeah. We should say, if nobody knows this, there's like a pretty significant modern clown and mime scene in LA. LA, it, you know, <sighs> it, true. trendy clown where yeah. it's like alt and maybe, I don't know, you, you eat a, a big candy bar. Or yeah, something. some people I know got into clowning. Uh, like who were in the improv scene in San Francisco? People were like, "Oh yeah, I've got a I've got a clowning workshop this weekend," and I'm like, "Why do you have that <laughs> on purpose?" Or? Yeah, I'm actually going to Invisible Jail. This weekend. Yeah, I've, I've got a clowning workshop, so I'll be in a city center, uh, <laughs> unable to move in, <laughs> from a four by four square. You know, it would be fun as having a full mime routine where it it begins with you doing like the petty misdemeanor and then you going to court mm-hmm. and then you in like uh you act, you're acting up in court like bah, 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 doing movements yeah. and stuff and then you're held in contempt of court overnight right and it goes all the way until you are released on good behavior you read the bible at one point in between and then you raise a family that is probably what it looked like when i was in vr for a week <laughs> i just had holding the, a child with both arms yeah i just the had the touch. headset on but i was like doing all the <laughs> motions and i was like please no and then they were like your your sentence to <laughs> vr jail or oh, whatever which was a place audio. i did go to vr jail it's 3d audio of uh, people telling me that i'm going to jail yeah they were all kids but they were pretty <laughs> serious <laughs> yeah that's the thrill of the there battle. there was a point in that video where i was in a courtroom and a lot of kids were yelling at me to get to the jury which i assume is what it's like to serve in a real jury we've been through it we've been in gem pop <laughs> i went to uh when i had jury duty um i i got let go they were like you're free to go and i said Oh, from okay. jury, did they do like jury selection? Yeah, because because like when you go in for jury duty, you just might not be selected, and then they like they're like, "We'll see you in two years or yeah. whatever." Pretty crazy idea, by the way. Yeah, just being like, I don't like this one. Yeah, well, be, it's like vetoing in a fighting game. Yeah, <laughs> like, I don't want this stage. Yeah, <laughs> he's uh, too mean to my guy. All right, um, le- we've got a couple things today. Oh. One of them is. The reactions to GTA 6, specifically from the Tate brothers and Elon Musk. Oh, boy. Um, so we'll get to that. But the first one I want to talk about is this TikTok trend where people are getting bite mark tattoos. Have yeah. you seen this? I, uh, I briefly, when we uh, talked about it the other day, I took a brief look, but then I'm like, I'll save, save my full reaction for the pod. I don't know if, I mean, we're going to pull some of these up, and I don't know if there's much more to it than what I just described, but it is still very strange. Well, when I heard it, my brain went, you know, as a connoisseur of dog shit tattoos, as, a, as an owner of quite a few myself, I truly, my instincts were like, okay, what are like, it's like a trendy, maybe like a goofy, like teen tattoo or something. And I thought it would be a vampire two dot by That's what I was thing. thinking too. Which, cool, no, not terrible. Yeah. Would you be mad if I got it? My bite mark. <laughs> yeah. For the audio listeners, it is a 
a, a, a girlfriend lining up to her boyfriend in a Yankees cap. Very cool. I don't know baseball at all. Is that, is that them? They do baseball? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, of course. My favorite the crack of the bat. They, I, she's, she's sidling up to bite him for real before getting the tattoo. This very much seems like uh, vampires tricked people. <laughs> yeah. Like, this you is what would happen. Odd. Yeah, yeah. It's like, uh, this is by Big Vampire. Oh, dude, this is nasty. On the the arm, too. That's like, well, actually, I can't think of anywhere else that would be better. Yeah, the neck, I think. Yeah. Could, you just get a, a neck chunk. tattoo that's just like a chunk. What if you got like a hyper realistic tattoo of like, you know, the like makeup that they'll do in like The Walking Dead or something? <laughs> Where somebody has like gashes, like The oh, Last of Us or something? Oh, when you watch, uh, I, I mean, a friend of us, Sophie, she works in like makeup, right? And there's like those hyper realistic like Halloween costumes where half their face is missing. Yeah. And I think you have to get desensitized to it because when I see that, might as well be real. I'm just like, oh, Jesus. That's how Christ. I am with um with gore and horror. Like like saw gore. Yeah, saw gore, which sounds like somebody like a name of a ogre or something. <laughs> I am saw saw gore. I love makeup. Um, but like there will be a horror movie trope where like somebody's eye gets something yeah, happens yeah. bad to the eye. I'm not even going to yeah. describe it, but uh, it's a it's meant to make you wince, and I do. Even though I know it's fake, just because it's like my brain doesn't know. Yeah, I, I, like my instinct doesn't know yet. I know all these people don't exist. Yeah, <laughs> and I haven't desensitized myself to watching this crap because I'm not a freak. <laughs> I'm not insane. Which just you kidding. Are. If you like it. Uh, can we pause it on that frame? I don't think. Hmm. Unpopular opinion. I don't think you needed a real person to bite for that. It I looks pretty generic. I think what would be better about that is maybe you break up. Yeah. <laughs> that is a, well, you know what's nice is that you can get away with something as obscure as like bite marks, maybe even a handprint. Because you just be like, eh, it's just, you know, a generic handprint. Me and, yeah, me and Sarah aren't together anymore. But it, yeah. And I got it at the same time that we were together, but whatever. Also, something I take into account when I get my dumbest tattoos very coverable right you can turn that into a little sun i just don't even know if this tracks to me as a bite mark no it would need more it's not not that i want it to be it's not really visceral enough like, yeah like a bite prior to the tattoo it was like more like oh what the hell what happened right right because this just looks like a few like chiclets in a circle <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it looks like sweet corn yeah i got a tattoo of sweet corn yeah i don't really know if it's like hitting for me but it's funny because I guess if um, you ever needed to, like, if you ever forgot who you <laughs> were in a relationship with and you get all their bite marks, you can, like, look at their dental records. Uh, it's like a memento tattoo for, for yeah. forensics. You, like, go to the police office and you go, like, hey, could you, like, pull up the dental records on this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm trying to remember who I dated in 2013. We're arresting you for being annoying. Uh, I would be... Is disappointed the right way to put it? If I was the girlfriend, I'd feel a bit embarrassed. My teeth look weird. I mean, when look. They're, when they're drawn. This is not to like um, yuck anybody's yum. This is like the same to me as like uh, tattooing a partner's name. Mm -hmm. You know? Which risky biscuit. It's a sure. risky biscuit. It's risky business. That's tattoos in frame right now. I'm not the biggest fan of. I think my difference is uh, they were dumb from the start. Yeah. And this is a... Even the music in the background is like so emotionally sincere. I like your tattoos though, Thanks, man. Uh, but it's not like I, I get I get it like from the other side. It's like you know, I actually I was thinking the other day what like when and why did I start getting them? And there's some life circumstances you know about that would set that up. But I realized it might resonate specifically with you because one of the reasons was. I was sick, or like one of the things I've always been frustrated by that I think tattoos code against is being branded by especially white people as light, light skin soft boy. Mm. And like they love it if you wear glasses and a bow tie. Right. And you're like, yeah, I'm actually just like, I'm the non threatening version of the thing you want to be attracted to. It's like when all the <laughs> NBA players were wearing, uh, wearing, 
gla- like just glasses rims. Yeah. <laughs> like the the like they were wearing glassesless glasses. God, uh, and it was a style, it was like a preppy preppy style, very uh college dropout coded. Mm. I just I have so many memories of just like I just even including even when I moved here of just people being like I just He's sort of like, you know, he's like fancy. He's like, uh, mm. like he's like, uh, you know, d- avoiding the terminology of what they're actually talking about. But like, I don't know, there was, uh, especially, actually, even more so growing up because it was such a white town. I just remember people being like, I just love it. You're beautiful. It's like caramel, the skin. It's oh. like so delicate. Oh. And like, there's, I, I, I'm, I'm projecting in parts, I'm, not, I'm sure some people were not going small bean soft boy, but the people my age were saying that like pretty explicitly because mm. they didn't know that they were racist. <laughs> and they yeah. would just be like, yeah, I just love it. It's like, you know, like the like less like gangster kind of like, you know. Like, it's like you're a beautiful black creature. So yeah, it's a beautiful black creature. Uh, B. <laughs> um, I was just rewatching it. Somebody sent me a clip of our reaction to maybe the first N word Bruno drops in black white. And it's so funny. It is. It's perfectly synced. Oh yeah. That sounds right. There was, um, I saw against my will, a comment on a Sabway's episode or something where someone was like, I was talking about when people like, uh, what's the word? They, something eyes you. Fetishize? But fetishize, yeah, like w- when it's like, oh, I love your hair, yeah, like that type of compliment, like it's a, it's one that you have to like receive in a, a specific context mm-hmm. and like know the history of to like feel a certain way about. So somebody was like, they were just giving you a compliment. I swear, you guys are so soft, like, and that's like, I don't know, I don't know if I was, you know, it's like they always say that, and it's like, but then you go to their Twitter and they're like complaining about something, and it's yeah. like this is. People say the Ethereum is whack. It's not. It's actually very cool. Yeah, and it's like, oh, you sound pretty soft, I think, actually. Oh. but I'm not crying. I'm yeah. laughing, actually. Yeah, it's weird. It's like, because sometimes I feel, uh, you know, this. <clears throat> there's an element of colorism to this, too, so I do not get this the same way I would if uh, my skin was darker. Mm. But, like, getting, uh, you know, called aggressive... Like, like, um, when I've like not really don't have a history of like raising my voice and, you know, content or anything like that, or like yelling or like actually being angry, like maybe I'll be a little pissy. Maybe I'll be a little passive aggressive, Mm. but like passive aggressive emphasis on passive, but I'm never like, but it's, but there is a thing where, um, you know, black people are like called like, like the, it's like a microaggression or whatever. Um, Which is, I do think, is a is like a term that people that don't get it find frustrating, or at least like find invalid because of the word micro. It's like, what you're upset about something so small. It's like, well, I'm upset on a micro level. I'm not yelling and screaming. I'm not particularly right. upset. It's cringe. Yeah, and you're annoying me. It's like a, but it's also the things that happen in the micro add up. Yes, and so that's why it's like. You, you point out that thing because that thing happens hundreds, thousands of times and it adds up to, you know, something, something greater. Like a micro mort, mort, like a micro mort adds up to yes. your death. <laughs> being, being nothing. Um, <laughs> I mean, that's also like a, a explicitly aggressive or racist comment is like, or not even just racist, prejudice of any kind, is in some ways it's clearer. Because more people, like fewer people, are willing to be that transparent. Yeah. Whereas, and if somebody does, it's like, well, look at this freak. Look at this. Don't we all know that racism is bad? As it's opposed also, to people that are just like, oh my god, it's like a sheet. Like, yeah, exactly. Which is another comment that it's I've gotten. Wrong. Uh, but it's more um, cringe than it is anything else. Like, I'm not losing sleep over this. It's just like seeing someone that corny is painful. Yeah, it's true. Corny's worse than being, or, or just like terrible. lack of. I think there's a certain like lack of awareness mm. and, and stuff like that. That's like, it's, um, it's, it's like not in the meme cringe, but it's quite literally cringe worthy. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's like gore. <laughs> I'm yeah. saying, I'm like, ah, yeah. I'm All right. Let's watch. What if what if it continued and it was like a perspective 
like it was like the um you like looked at the the arm and it was like your girlfriend biting you <laughs> like from the inside out. hyper realistic yeah. her escaping like when you look but, at um those like si- those chalk drawings where you look at them at an angle and it looks like they're in like three dimensions oh like yeah you go and you see some like uh chalk graffiti against a sidewalk and it's like oh my god it's master chief yeah <laughs> and he's standing up <laughs> wait Jacob, can we briefly pull up the first one again i think i noticed something i hope it's not true Okay, no, I was wrong. I'm sorry. For a second, I thought the tattooist had the same arm tattoo, like oh. the stripes, but I guess the perspective was just off. Yeah, how awkward would that be if Oof. you like run into somebody else who has your girlfriend's bite mark on them? Yeah, and or and a kiss and a hug. Yeah, you go, wait a second, hold on, let's go side by side. Wait a minute. And then you like, tut- and it's like, hmm, hmm, it lines up, and you're like, I have to make some calls. I dated a right after Invisalign. Oh, hmm. yeah, <laughs> damn. Has she been wearing a retainer? Oh, my God. Oh, see, that's the weird one. Ooh. That one's a uh, probably won't show that one just because it's a little a, more a more visceral bite. That's yeah. what I was picturing. Yeah, yeah. On the neck, or the shoulder, I guess. They like do it, I Ooh. think, in red. Yeah. Oh, that oh. is way worse. Yeah. That one... it never. It looks like it never heals. Mm-hmm. They did it in red. That's crazy. Also, they did. I it. feel like you'd get asked about, like, hey, did you, are you okay? Yeah. That looks more like one of those. Uh, 3D scans when you get braces or something. That's like yeah. the, the, just the structure of it is less flattering than those little staple shapes they did for the other one. Yeah, that one was like, oh Jesus! Great. Oh, I'm inside the mouth. Is there this. is there one more we can watch? Was there a place I can get this shit? <laughs> something? Uh, whatever. I guess I don't care. It looks like these are ads for the tattoo artists, and mm. I don't want to. I don't want to say anything bad about the artist because they're just doing what they're asked. Go get other tattoos. From, well, or go get a bite mark tattoo if you're a sick freak. <laughs> yeah. I guess it's the trend. I don't know if we can play the song, but there's a specific song playing. These don't look the same. Like, like... The convention is like shifting a lot. Yeah. Is that one even was that like partially red or it's just his arm is so fucked up? I'm so confused. Yeah, I think he's just got these removed. don't even n- none of these look the same. Yeah. I also think I uh, just personally, I don't mind not everyone needs like a sleeve or patchwork or whatever, but like there's always something a little strange to me about one really odd tattoo. Just it like, ma- yeah, on a completely nude body. It just makes, like one. It makes me think you're in a frat or something. Yeah. And there's just like the Sigma symbol the or something. Brand. And yeah. then you're like, I never really wanted one, but I kind of. Yeah, my tattoo, a, my girlfriend wanted to bite me. This is a bad time for me to reveal my bite mark tattoo that I have. Who this did is it? My soul tattoo. A previous co host um, of the podcast. I went to the. Yeah. The hell? I went to the tattoo artist and I said, Will you bite me? <laughs> <laughs> Is it extra? Is it extra if you bite me first? It's on your back and you don't know that's what they're doing. He's like, yeah. I was like, ow, Jesus. tattoos really do hurt. Yeah. In a big kind of sphere. Yeah, no one really <laughs> talks about it, but they like bite you and yeah. stuff. And he's like, wait, what? Oh, yeah, no, course. like the, the, the tattoo gun, it feels like it bites. Right. And the shape that after the tattoo is like a bite it's mark. It's like a bite mark. I don't know how page. do you, you see somebody with a sleeve? Where did you, how did you cover <laughs> up all the bite marks? <laughs> Damn, somebody was hungry, huh? Yeah. Um, nom, 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 nom. <laughs> Give you a sleep. <laughs> also, it's a bite. It's not like a like a a nibble or something. It's like a medical bite mark. It is. Like, it's like like yeah. a say ah kind of bite mark. It's like maybe this is gonna come off the wrong way, but it feels twilight coated. Yeah. <laughs> like it, it feels like it's from a bygone era. I've I've placed my ownership on you. All right. Well, uh, I don't know what the hell that is, but. <laughs> Well, another thing, so... Once we, we hit a certain goal on the Patreon, of course I will get one. Uh, y- you are also... Yeah, I'm going to get one on my butt. <laughs> I'm going to get one right on my nose. Yeah, I'm going to get one there, on my... There were ones where they're doing it on their butt. Oh I figured God. we couldn't show those. Yeah, yeah. That's tricky. The, the, on the Patreon, I'll post a TikTok <laughs> of somebody biting my ass. <laughs> and then I get a TikTok. One lucky patron. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah, there's uh, a specific tier. <laughs> 20 spots available that was unwise I 20 think. spots yeah, yeah. That was... um okay so gta 6 trailer uh came out ah, and that was it 
you know, after, after 10 years of, you know, one of the most successful, most profitable games, the most of all profitable time. piece of entertainment ever in human history. Oh, well, there you go. Isn't that fucking insane? That is insane. GTA Online is a big part of that. I think that's yeah, yeah. way more. Right, because it's like total, it's probably got to be in the billions because it's, um, it's been hundreds of millions of dollars a year yeah. for like several years, right? The, the uh, reason that people knew even before the announcement of the trailer was coming out that there was going to be a GTA 6 trailer this year and it was probably going to come out in the next two years is because 2K, the publisher, posted uh, expected revenue and it's $7 billion. <laughs> it's increased by <laughs> something like that, like billions of dollars. And they're like, wow. Feeling good about NBA this year, huh? Feeling like pretty psyched about GTA um, Online. Though, if you pop back over to that uh, trailer thing, um, we're not going to watch the trailer because uh, we've heard that they might claim us, but our friend Alana took the risk. So watch your back, Alana. Though the views, very tight, very good. Very good stuff. Um, I can I watch, I'm going to watch the trailer because I haven't watched yeah. it yet. Um, Do you know where the game is set? I heard they're going back. They're going back to San Andreas. Uh, no, welcome home, dude. They're going uh, to L.A. But but what do no, they call no. it? Your home. To San Francisco? To Florida. Yeah. They're going back to Miami? Yeah, Vice City, baby. Vice City. Okay, yeah. Um, well, that's not my home. But uh, <laughs> Vice City. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, let's, let's watch it. I'm going to watch it is what I meant to say. You don't get to see it. One day old, 109 million views. Yeah, it broke Mr. Beast's record. Do we have more than for Sad Boys? Come again? Do we have more views for Sad? I don't check the analytics. No. Yeah, man. It's okay if we have less. It's like the biggest video ever. I just thought, I think we're close. Or no, yeah, we're super duper close. Check those analytics. Oh, Jesus Christ, don't know. Um, so, uh, trailer came out, broke all the records. Some of our favorite people... <laughs> Uh, have had responses to this. Um, oh God, I'm remembering two of these. A, uh, one I want to look at is, oh yeah, so first of all, the reason that they dropped the trailer early was because of a leak. Yes. Yeah. Um, and they did it in response to a leak and now no one's going to remember the leak because the, <laughs> you know, they, they, they released the trailer for a game that comes out in a year for this reason, I think. <laughs> yeah. Um, because someone leaked it anyway. There was a, a lead producer uh, whose like son's friend like leaked footage and stuff from his computer. Dude, which so is, bold. I which mean, is wildly bold. You yeah. have to come from a level of, I'm guessing, level of privilege that makes you think you are in. <laughs> they will have you killed. <laughs> they have the most money. <laughs> yeah, it's like the um, Wizards of the Coast and the Pinkertons for that. <laughs> yeah, because a guy was mailed something by them. <laughs> by them, yeah. Um, and uh, uh, the oh yeah, so one of the responses. This is just whatever, but it's funny. Is uh, from Aiden Ross. Can we click this first link, Jacob? Aiden Ross is on, doing a live with someone I... Oh, okay. Wait, why would they... Wait, scroll up. Rockstar employee leaked the GTA 6 storyline on Aiden Ross's stream. Why would they do that? That seems like that would put their job in danger. What's going on, man? Do they just not think they can... They, come on. I'm confused. Rockstar, also, whatever. 2K's famously litigious. If anyone yeah. was going to fuck their life up. Also, you got to crop out your battery life. <laughs> that always blows my mind. I'm so self-conscious about it. Just ever, yeah. Okay, we can hit play. You want to know all the, the details? Yeah, 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 yeah. The good juicy stuff. Okay, so it's gonna be Lucia is the main character, and she's gonna be the main character. She's gonna be in prison, right? She's I don't like prison. that. We have a girl's the main character. I don't like that shit. She's she's iconic. Don't worry. She's it's not gonna be like the <sighs> typical. It's gonna really blow people away. It's but not like, be bro, like, like I feel like they're doing that shit to adapt to 2020, 23 and shit. Like, bro, we don't need no girls of character, bro. I hear you, but trust me, it's not gonna be like that. First of all, this was confirmed literally years ago. They revealed that it was female protagonist. Oh, but it's not. It's both of them. Ah, uh, yeah. Because and look, not to be cynical about it. I mean, hey, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's no longer that. But that was the original league. They. It's Rockstar's probably not going to take the risk of not having a male protagonist at all. Yeah. That's probably, it's, or at least a co-star. They already had the tech to, you know, hop around in, in GTA 5 or whatever. 
Just imagine having the instinct. It's within seconds. He's like immediately like, oh, that pisses me off, bro. That It's like it, yeah, he's he's become that kind of reactionary. It's so funny just being so young and being so yeah. like uh, boomery. And being just like the his face changes kind of so fast. I didn't even know the net code was that good on live. Yeah, <laughs> like, he gets that message like, oh, man. Come on. But it's like, a woman. But like, and then all his chats probably like w w w w. Yeah, and he's like, okay, chat, you like that? Okay, cool. I'll was keep that what you um, things. Do you guys think I'm cool? But I'm just a, but I'm just a crowd work comedian, right? Drops Drop, the mic. Drops the mic. Dude. Drops the phone. <laughs> dude, he's gonna be the next stream guest. Which one of them? Uh, uh, Matt Reif. Hell I bet he's yeah. gonna. I feel like he's gotta show up on Aiden Ross's stream at some point. He's gonna be the next. Sad Boys guest, guys, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Mm -hmm. Matt Rife coming on mm -hmm, mm -hmm. January 6th. Nope. We'll be doing... <laughs> Stop it. Uh, also, the instinct to be like, hey, um, all that, the reason they're doing this is to adapt to 2023. But What year do you think we're in? Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> such a funny thing. It's like they're just trying to make something that's like of the time <laughs> that, that we live in. That actually is the, always the weirdest part of... Um, you know how people even kind of boomers know that socially racism is wrong like like they know that 99% of people know that like racism is the thing you have to say is wrong yeah it doesn't matter how you perform that or like what your praxis is it's just the rules like racism is wrong the civil war happened states rights but also you know hey, we, here's the law here's the rules yeah, racism is wrong but we solved it yeah, exactly <laughs> But people will do just do completely racist things, but then still announce the clan. You know, it's like yeah, it's yeah. like you have to follow the rules. You have to you're not allowed to wear that outfit, but you can do everything. Right. I, they always have to justify it with some kind of like principle, or like well, it's because you know they're recasting the Little Mermaid. It's cynical, and I'm like. First of all, everything's cynical. You yeah. Just, Rockstar doesn't care about you. They don't like you. You're annoying to them. Yeah, but, look at the fucking Squid Game reality show. It's like everything is, it's just the money mode, money's the motive, right? It, the, but the reason they're doing it, they always seem to forget. It's like, non guys buy GTA. Yeah. Everyone buys GTA. It, it, GTA is, it, it's, like you said, the one of the biggest media properties ever to exist. Like, number one, the house, I don't know if the houses are running this one as well, but let's just say the house brothers or one of the houses. They wanted to make a story with a female protagonist. Mm -hmm. That is, that is, is pretty much always has to be a part of it, or else you just can't do a very good or authentic job of it. You you could not make the same argument for like Red Dead Redemption. They're just adapting because people wanted a game in the old west. Yeah, and it's like well, people did want a game in the old west. They wanted to make a game in the old west, and they made a good game in the old west. True. It's not like like what is bothering you about it? Oh, that guy's like pronouns. You yeah, know, it's like it's such a <laughs> such a surface level critique. It's just vibe space. It's just, just I don't like women. That's all it is. But what's so funny about this is uh, the reaction from uh, <laughs> Elon Musk, uh, who <laughs> fucking loser, famous, um, <laughs> famous edgy edge lord, uh, <laughs> king of um, sticking it to the libs, the king of sting, baby, the king of sting, dude. He's he won't. He doesn't let anybody tell you what to do. What he's gonna do. Elon Musk, the roast master general, they call him. Yeah, he he was asked in a Twitter thread about GTA Five, and he, his response is so funny. It felt like it took me back to like Fox News being upset about the hot coffee mod and like yeah uh, yeah like uh, uh what was that that the, was the San, San Andreas, Andreas mission. yeah where um by the way just like my point is that Grand Theft Auto has been a controversial video game for the entirety of its lifetime. Mm -hmm. And the controversies have always been like from pearl clutching conservatives. Yes, yeah. And one of the controversies uh, was this thing called the hot coffee mod where someone discovered that you could modify the game beyond like, so basically there were assets in the game of a, a, of a sex scene. Mm hmm. And the it was not accessible. A playable off-screen sex scene. Playable oh, like, no off -screen. penetration on screen. No yeah, playable off-screen sex scene that was removed from the game but was still in the game data. <laughs> People found it, hacked it back into the game. And then there was a controversy about that to the point 
that it escalated and they uh, uh, had to change the ESRB rating of the game. So insane. And then they re they were able to re-release the game without it and uh, get back to like a T rating yeah. or something like that. So, uh, yeah. It, oh, it went from, I think, R to X. They yeah. Did, ironically. <laughs> or like the ESRB, it's like um, M to... A. Oh yes, that's right. Is uh, A is adults only? I mean, also Australia and a lot of Europe are so such so, so soy and <laughs> beta about that kind of. I mean, we in the UK we couldn't get Bully the other oh, yeah. game because it was called Bully. Oh, and then it was released under. Well, I mean, this partly on Rock Seven Two K. Horrible name. I love that game. It's a Latin name that means dog eat dog, and it's Canis Canum Edit. Oh. It's kind of kind of edit, and the logo is just like the school logo. Oh. What an unappealing idea. Yeah. Hey, do you guys want to go to private school? Pay for it. <laughs> Pay for that game, children. Do you guys want to go to Latin private school? <laughs> um, oh, boy, yeah. Put down San Andreas. It's time to learn. <laughs> so Grand Theft Auto, for those who are not familiar, is a game... About crime. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's uh, the title of it is a crime. Mm -hmm. You do it five times. Uh, you uh, one of the bi like you do you do missions oftentimes uh, cr committing crimes. Heists is it's heat. The GTA Five is the movie Heat. It's a heist movie. Yeah, and uh, and one of the things that kids did is like for all of time is fuck around with the game, <laughs> hack in all the guns and stuff, blow things up. Get the cop. There's a star system where the cops can, you know, uh, basically if you you do a small crime, you know, you one star, you do a bunch of crimes or big crimes, five star, then they're sending SWAT team helicopters, you know, all the stuff after you. As a kid, that becomes its own game. Now you're like, I want to defeat the cops. I want to hide from the cops, whatever. Yeah, putting in the all weapons hack and sometimes invincibility and then just doing that was, I would say, most T, like younger people's GTA. Oh you don't yeah, do and, the rest of the game. Yeah, no, a lot of people didn't play the missions, and to a lot of people, that's like their childhood. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and I'm not here to make a point about violence in video games, but this is an old take that this is what GTA is. This is my point. Um, and uh, and so Elon had like the most baffling statement. I don't know why you would ever say this uh, <laughs> in so public. <laughs> <laughs> His tweet is. <laughs> Tried GTA 5, <laughs> but didn't like doing <laughs> dude. It's such a pathetic thing to say. It, I don't believe it's you a at video all. game. I, why is what on that moral barometer? Why is murder in other settings fine, dude? Harvest Moon loved it. Hate farming, hate farming. as a concept. I'm not trying to go out and like be a farmer. I hate agriculture. So, like, why would I play this game? What is this? Corn? Phoenix Wright, dude. I don't want to be a lawyer. I'm not a fucking narc, bro. Yeah. L.A. Noir. I don't like living in the past. Uh, I couldn't. I couldn't. I didn't want to defend anyone who was potentially a criminal, so I couldn't play the lawyer game where I was a defense <laughs> attorney. <laughs> didn't. Um, GTA V required shooting police officers in the opening scene. Just couldn't do it. <laughs> it's. I just imagine. Have you seen that? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for your service, sir. Yeah. Have you seen that meme of the uh Jacob, can you type in um little boy gun stock photo? Uh it's the Oh yeah. <laughs> it's it's the second row. The second row. And, and then the to red the left, to the left, red t shirt. The Winnie the Pooga. And then scroll down to the like photos. <laughs> <laughs> Go to the second. <laughs> yeah, this is this is this is <laughs> Elon <laughs> can't do it. This is Elon playing GTA, dude. It requires doing crime. Yeah, he's like, no, little, I don't want to do it, dude. Winnie I the respect Pooh. the law. Little Winnie the Pooh, clothed cloth kid, almost oh shooting, God. getting upset and crying with a gun in his hand. It's just so. I, I think what maybe rings so hollow about it is he is lying. Not lying that he didn't play GTA 5. I don't even care, whatever. Uh, but he is lying that that is the ethical reason. Yeah. He's just like, it's, it feels who's like he he's performing? Pandering. He's like, they grossly overestimate how much other people are looped in. It feels like, I don't know, but he's like uh, running out of people who think he's really smart. Because yes, I think yeah. he like keeps doing things that like uh, counter that narrative. 
either he keeps knowingly being or dumb. not. Yeah, it's like he keeps doing wild stuff where people are like, oh, I thought this guy was supposed to be a genius. Because like when he when we had never heard him talk and just heard him like launching rockets and like making cars, we thought he was like the next coming of I don't know, a big a big old smart guy. But we wanted um, the what his branding really early on was. I'm I'm kind of like a real. I'm, I'm kind of like a real life Iron Man. Yeah, he's like Tony Stark, dude. It'd be like if Tony Stark shit himself every time he flew, and we, yeah. we eventually were like, I don't think he's that good at being Iron Man. Uh, yeah, have you seen Avengers? Do you see how many fucking <laughs> civilians die? <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, dude, have you rewatched the first Iron Man anytime recently? No. It, the first time, first two times Iron Man does anything. It is fighting miscellaneous uh, Middle Eastern terrorists, right? Unnamed, deliberately, mm-hmm. and his motivation before he gets captured, like the reason he's fighting back, is because he's in like a Humvee in again anonymous Middle Eastern country, and a, one of the thank you for your service, by the way. One of the one of the soldiers in there was like. Tony Stark, I'm, I'm like a huge fan. My kid loves you. And then he dies in the explosion. Like, and then like his backstory is like his father was like a war profiteer. Yeah. Well, he's in Afghanistan because he's a weapons dealer. Yeah, <laughs> like, and he's a weapons dealer. He's an arms yeah. manufacturer. And then the first time he does anything in the full suit with the paint job, everything, he flies down to just somewhere, to just some camp and is just murdering <laughs> Uh, air quotes terrorists. Oh uh, yeah, and just just f- shooting on them. They can't hurt him because of his special suit. Yeah, he's, he's GTAing. I mean, can I just say thank you for your service? Thank you for your service. Stark, sir. Yeah. It's, uh, thank you for doing crime for our benefit. Thank you for saving us from the fictional Middle East. <laughs> Me personally, the fictional terror threat. I hate doing crime. Couldn't do it. Yeah, personally, yeah. <laughs> Especially <laughs> war crimes. No, it couldn't be me, dude. Requires shooting for the I quit. Services. Yeah, it's when I so fucking funny. Uh, <laughs> and then um, the Tay brothers spoke out about GTA Six. But like before we look at this, we also have to list some of the things that the Tay brothers have spoken um, have also spoken out about, like books, <laughs> um, uh. and books and movies. Recording of history. Uh, music. Uh, just things in general. Oh, by the way, speaking out against music is Andrew Tate's entire rap career, which is an <laughs> affront to the concept of music. I can see if I had that rap career, I would want to eliminate the medium of music. Um, I would, I would want to get rid of audio. It's do or die. Suicide. <laughs> it's, I hate music, and that's why I'm making music. I hate GTA 5 because I cried <laughs> shooting the police. That's his uh, slam poetry session yeah. that he also had to have removed. He was uh, at the slam poetry set with uh, with uh, with Rose from Black White. Oh, yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah dude. He's a Def Jam. People don't know that. All right, though. can we look at the Tate Brothers? New GTA 6 is out. Have you ever played any GTA? This is a genuine question. I've never played any of them. I believe... That I played I the first one. Mm. That's like a top-down bird's oh my eye God, view so old. <laughs> kind of TV game without any real graphic violence. Back when I, I was just come, ten or eleven, I just come back from now. When, whenever it came out, I, re- I do recall that. But you know what? I'm going to speak about GTA Six while while you're on the topic because now we're actually talking about something. Wait, pause. Relative. Okay, it's got rumble at the top left, so that means that this grid of photos they have is from the stream itself. It's pretty fucking telling that them not liking it. It's just photos of black people. That's oh, just yeah. all this is. It's none of the vistas, none of the missions. The protagonist isn't in it at all. It's yeah. just like, ah, uh, this is scary, I feel like. I love that Tristan Tate played GTA 1. I don't even know if he really played GTA 1 or if he's pretending to remember what GTA 1 was or he was giving himself an out for the narrative where he's like, well, this one didn't have any violence. I don't think that's true. Well, I, I don't... Wait, yeah, was he saying the first game doesn't have violence? Yeah, he kind of implied that. We could go back to... We could just watch the whole clip again, but... Um, I do think it's funny that he's essentially like, yeah, I, I, I haven't played a Grand Theft. I played it when it was a text-based adventure. <laughs> yeah. I played DOS. it when it was in black and white on DOS. Yeah, um, but I can't remember. I've never, I've never shot in anyone in, in a game. <laughs> Dude, in a he game. sounds like he's either played all of them and knows it very well, or knows nothing about it and checked. Because that's like a common thing as well. People would be like, oh, Sonic, he's. There's like somebody called like Rose or some shit, and Knuckles and their friends, mm-hmm, and like yeah. yeah, Amy Rose, like his girlfriend, and Amy something. Rose. Boom, they were a bunch of bandages. It's like yeah, I don't. Something. What he's, he's running or mm. something? Dr. Robotnik, yeah. who's also known as Eggman. 
Yeah, you know, also in the segment, Knuckles isn't a kid now, in case you were know. curious. If you, this isn't my kind of shit. <laughs> so, I, I actually played it when it was um, when it was a, uh, a, a, a tabletop paper RPG. <laughs> yeah. I remember when you used to play a little man in a red hat trying to rescue a princess and teaming up with your brother. Now, if rescuing purity from evil... Well, is this a real take that's happening right now? Is he? This is also a super old... This is truly... Um, I'm going to tell you when these talking points last happened uh, in my mind. Uh, the year is 2010. Mass Effect has just come out. The headline is Sex Box on Fox News. That's right. Uh, because you can romance characters in off-screen relationships yeah. in Mass Effect. And games are only made for children is the claim, which is not the it, case at it's, all. It's like cartoons are made for children. Can you believe the stuff they're putting on The Simpsons? Can you believe yep. the stuff they're putting on Family Guy? Adults buy games so much more to the point where Nintendo is the only place with the market share to make games for kids anymore. Yeah. And so um, it, it's remarkable to me that they're going, I, rem I remember when games were like, you could be a wizard. <laughs> and now you've got, you're, you're going to a strip club and, and, and someone's twerking. You know, I can actually remember a time where you're, you, were, you were a red hat and it's this year. It's uh, the latest Mario that yeah, came out Super a Mario month ago. Yeah, Super Mario Wonder, I think, and it came out a month ago. Also, around the same time that that red hat man was saving a princess, there were games like Custer's Revenge where just look it up in text before you like look up the video. It is more uh, explicit and tr like offensive and triggering than the, anything. anything that's ever been in Grand <laughs> Theft Auto ever in the history of the series. So much so that it's literally illegal to, <laughs> you cannot publish that now, including at X. Yeah. It is like, it's, you know, people can probably infer and I don't recommend most people. I it don't recommend it, but I'm just, just but it is just a counterpoint to this concept that, that games were always this like squeaky clean ridiculous, thing. dude. Yeah. I remember when books were a nice tidy little story about a guy with a long beard flipping over gambling tables. I remember when books were, they were small, they were square, and they <laughs> had names like Miss Sunshine and uh, <laughs> Mr. Mustache and shit. <laughs> And uh, there everyone were, poops. Nothing bad happened in any of the books. I remember a time where art was drawn on the cave wall and was supposed to represent a big elephant I saw. Um, I remember a time when there was a book about a curious little monkey <laughs> and he wore a raincoat. A yellow hat. Yeah. Um, it's a guy wearing a yellow hat. But not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? What is going on? Not anymore. I remember a time. I remember a time where I interviewed that guy that said he did crack with Obama. <laughs> All right, uh, let's keep playing. I'm not a fan of anyone under the age of 18, 21 maybe, playing video games where the goal is to shoot police officers. I just don't think that's good for society. With all the amazing graphics and engines and whatever people put into these video games, I feel like you could create a better objective with the game, you know? Maybe you are the police officer. Maybe... <laughs> Those games exist. Yeah, absolutely, of course. Uh, they should make it so GTA's for 18 and above. Yeah, it's it's a it's <laughs> isn't GTA rated M? Yeah, <laughs> uh, or R or what? I don't know how it works. Uh, M here. M in in uh, ESRB, which is 17 plus. Yeah, that's interesting. I Okay. No, well, it should be for 21. No, 21 is wild. So funny. It's um, it's such a funny... I think it should be 26. You can't be on your parents' insurance before you play it. It feels weird to make this statement about any media because, like, why why stop at video games? Why not? <laughs> I don't think there should be any movies where any bad things happen. They're, they're also doing that, like, faux intellectual thing pioneered by uh, the dark professor, Jordan P. Peterson, or Deb, whatever the hell. Meet, the meat man. Beef, beef daddy, he, uh, where like you take a piece of media, really simple media for babies, and then you over intellectualize it by representing something as purity. Mm -hmm. Usually, any kind of feminine presence in the game, you make that purity, you make it ultra conservative, and then you take like the mission being, you, you just you just make it into a. a, a Cinderella. That's all. Oh, you just, make it specifically into like saving you from a tower or something. Yeah. That's the only media reference point that they know from before like 
2005. It's just funny to, because even on its face, without extrapolating anything that isn't said in this video, they are comparing a game for children to a game for late teens and adults. Yeah, it's like the mission. Is there ever was it? Yeah, it's like, the way they they're first? comparing a movie that's rated G to a movie that's rated R, quite literally, because you know that's the same the same age ranges, and you can't deliver the same idea in a different way. Like GTA Five is just about like. It's about three guys that suck. <laughs> like, they're really bad people, and they're miserable because they're bad. And then at the end, well, the mild spoilers is like, one of the two worser of them die. That's the choice. Spoilers for a 10-year-old game. And actually, when I was like a shitty college guy when that came out, I was just like, this, this is deep. <laughs> this is actually wild i can't believe that people don't understand the deeper themes i'm like no it's just about like uh, people not being great to be around. um i couldn't get through shooting cops so i didn't play it oh right yeah, yeah. it actually involves crime i'm realizing now no this is before i understood the thin blue it line does involve crime yeah thank you for your thank you for your service for not playing it actually. yeah um Austin, thank you for your service for not playing it shout out Jacob, to you play it Flipping the salute the other way. Yeah, to I played game. Metal Gear Solid, which is a game for Patriots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, that's a pro government game. <laughs> yeah, I played. A, I really like Peace Walker, where you build a private military organization. Yeah, because that's the opposite. I love of a that golf. that game has no has no subtext about how bad um, it's about war. War being, is it's about it being pog. <laughs> yeah, it's about how war and yeah and and war machines are like super dope actually, what and war crimes are sick. Do they, they just don't watch movies, right? That was always the that one of their things. Yeah, that's like, a, you. It, I don't think they're allowed to have media criticism when they. The last time they interacted with media was when they were ten years <laughs> yeah. old. What is what do they enjoy? Cigars. They, yeah, <laughs> pretending to like cigars and whiskey. Yeah, they and karate or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, I've got no good. time for media. I'm too busy fighting b evil. I'm, d I'm busy talking about when I was in MMA. <laughs> What, maybe this is not important or not. It's what's this? Why is President Gay? I thought I trending. Might, I yeah. All right. I didn't want to see it. I just, that's interesting. Um, enough is enough. It's GTA or whatever. Look up Gay. <laughs> <game. laughs> Jacob right clicked on the, the post. It just All said, right, look Jacob. up Gay. Do look up Gay real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's us. Immature <laughs> people saying President Gay is trending. Rested. <laughs> <laughs> it's just people asking why it's trending. It's an Ouroboros. Maybe that's, that's like when um when uh, when trending topics were even worse after Elon took over. Weird things like the would trend, yeah. <laughs> and then everybody would just be talking about that. We went, I think we were hanging out yesterday, and it was just just like we saw like Hassan trending, and I just tapped it. I'm like, what's Hassan trending? And it's just when. Usually he's streamed or is streaming, yeah. and a bunch of people mention him. Yeah, just happens every single day, bro. It's every day, bro. Um, all right. Well, do we have any uh, like good closing thoughts on this? <laughs> that shot of the. Little I will baby probably with the gun. tweet tweet that thing about Elon later with that boy as the quote tweet. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Austin's doing it right now. The rat, Elon, pl Elon playing the beginning of GTA Five. Gamers. We are heading off to the Patreon episode at patreon.com slash sadboys. One of the reasons is that I have finally gotten, gotten my ass in gear and I have my DMV written test coming up so I can finally get my American license. On the Patreon, we are going to be uh, watching a Jubilee video, specifically six black women versus one secret Asian woman. <laughs> but we end every episode of Sad Boys with a particular phrase. Oh, by the way, patreon.com slash sadboys. Patreon. And you can subscribe now and you'll get the live show when it comes out. Patreon.com slash we love you. And we're sorry. But Ooh. actually it's patreon.com yeah, slash yeah, but we love, we love you and we're sorry. Yeah. Goodbye. See. How long y'all cook y'all greens for? Until the Lord says stop. <laughs> <laughs> what shows did people watch? Black shows. Here. Here. I was like, here. Here. Sister, sister, yeah. sister. Yeah. girlfriends, anybody? Uh, yeah. Living yeah. single, yeah. shout out. Yeah. Yeah. Friends. Yeah. Friends. Oh, friends. Oh, a, a new world. Girlfriends. Girlfriends. I was like, someone please say girlfriends. Gucci girl, Gucci girl, how you doing? How you moving?